Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Brexit. Brexit. Everybody's talking about Brexit today. It's over. It's the end of the road. Theresa May is out. Brexit is done. Or maybe it's not. I don't understand that whole country. Because if you look back on it, I would have said, yeah, England's got it together. Out of, out of everyone, I would have said England's got it together. Yeah. And maybe we're the ones who are crazy. Maybe America's a little crazy. Well, anytime you meet a British person here, right? You're just like, oh my God, they're so much smarter. Yeah. And better than me. They're just better. Like we just feel like it's, it must there's be residual. There's something about the accent that makes you feel like they're smarter. They're better actors. Like in LA, you meet a lot of, a lot of, oh, yeah. of British people and you're like, all right, cool, man. I might not be as good as you. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is. And, and it seems like because of the, the culture and the comedy of it, right? That they have everything to get a, you know, together and they're funnier. Like, yeah. oh man, they can, they can oh, yeah. have a laugh, take the piss, do what, you know, whatever. Uh, and you look at like the office and things like that. And you're like, man, there's so much further advanced than we are comedically and Monty Python back in the day and all that stuff. Now I feel like it's just a whole box of crazy over there. I, the, it started with the Brexit thing, right? Right. Um, now what? Do, first of all, well, I'm, I'm going to start with the Brexit thing. I don't understand why you're having 90 votes on one thing with like 80 different governments over there. I, I, what the fuck is all this? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Oh, it's back on. We've got to vote on it three more times and then four more times. And then it's not going to happen. And then this lady's stepping down and they're like, yeah, Twitter's like, yeah, Theresa May is gone. Brexit's, you know, this, we're really sticking it to him. And it's like, no, she's going to be replaced uh, more than likely by this, this guy named Bojo is what they're calling him, which oh, I'm a big fun. fan of that name. Yeah. Fun. Boris uh, Johnson or Johansson. Who oh. knows? I don't live there. I don't care. I've seen a photo of the guy and he looks hysterical. Like bowl cut. Oh, nice. Really, really funny red hair where you're just like, oh, no, this guy looks crazy. Right. So it started with Brexit, right? And then you go to this, they, they elected that the Muslim mayor of London. Yeah, we're going to show them we're different. I didn't know there was a huge Muslim Which population over there. Which I told you, that's there. not weird over there. I, that's it's what you said, right? Like a, right. Yeah. It's, it, they're definitely integrated completely. I found the- it weird because... As soon as they elected him, mm-hmm. there was more violence in the city. Right. Where before, you never heard about that type of violence where it was just like, guns were always a no-no in that country to begin with, right? Right. Then people just started stabbing each other. You had all these stabbing attacks. Or running over with vans. And yeah. And then getting out and stabbing you. So I, I, I don't know when that changed or why or if it was because of that mayor mm-hmm. or just the influx of immigration. It must have been influx of immigration, like I'm saying, because before, like... And that's why they wanted Brexit, to get out of this thing so they could be their own country and stop immigration and all this other stuff. Now they've banned knives over there. You know that, right? Oh. Yeah, you can't can't have a knife on you in public whatsoever. That's okay. So anybody who says... That's okay with me. yeah, Yeah, but anybody who says, like, oh, man, it's guns. Guns are the answer. If we get rid of guns... No, that's not the case. Yeah, no. You can, you can look at London. You're not having a gun. It's going to be a knife. Yeah. They're just going to be knifing people. Yeah. And that's even weirder because then if you're not expecting it, right, like a knife attack, you're just chilling out on the subway or a bus. Uh, you know, usually somebody comes up with a gun. And you're like, all right, I, I can at least see that. Right. Can't see a knife, really. Yeah. You can hide that and then boom, stab the shit out of me. Um, so they're like, are they the perfect example of what happens when too many refugees come in? I don't know. Just because before that, like I said, it was so you've been there. Yeah. And it's just so integrated. And I mean, the way that we eat Mexican food in in California is Indian curry there. 
like gotcha cuisine like the, it's they're just so integrated english accents it's just a right hijabs everywhere but it's fine everyone just kind of that was life so it's and for a long time so for me is this the perfect like petri dish perfect experiment to say like look like this there was no violence in this way before that you know what i mean yeah and that, then it kind of i i think i think it's too late now for all of this shit i don't think you can stop it i don't think you can stop it. no 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 i'm just saying like here we go like this no is, i know yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, yes i i think i think part of that you know as a a test sample you know using the the petri dish it's just analysis a small, such here a smaller yeah, country that yeah. is doing so well with like i said integrating people from other countries and other cultures all together and it working because it just wasn't a big deal it doesn't work anytime i'm saying no i know but, but any, now, anytime but immigration it, and, yeah. and religion get involved yeah too much like th- that's it you're yeah. you're fucked as a country yeah um do you remember the arrest of development i think no where michael was nope dating um nope <laughs> i don't Okay. That is one show for me, for me personally, that is never stuck. So Charlize Theron was playing, um, she was at, she, she was playing his girlfriend, he was dating her, and he didn't know that she was retarded for their whole relationship because she was British. And when they it's like really flashed funny. back to it, yeah. you could tell, like they would do the flashback of like him being like, oh shit, like, and them being together and her just being Full on mentally retarded. That's but that's really with funny. An English accent, so we just think, oh my god, they're brilliant. They're brilliant, yeah, right? That's great. So, yeah, I, so smart. That that show never stuck with me. It did for you. It's so you love good. it. Yeah, 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 you love it. Look, there, there is a, a but I'm a, a lot of people who love it. I I'm love on Bateman, the Bateman too. Bateman train. So if he wasn't a part of it, I wouldn't love it as much. But my God, no, it's great. It was really good. It, it was really great. I just it never stuck with me like a Thirty Rock or something, or like a Seinfeld or something like that, um, where it was just like, oh hey, do you remember that one Seinfeld? And it's just like, yeah, I do. Oh, uh, okay. Arrested Development never really stuck to me like that, where I was just like, yeah, I remember liking it when it was on, and I watched all of them, I think, um, except for the last season. Yeah, I checked out of that. It was okay. It was weird. Yeah. Um, but uh, when it was on, I remember watching all of it and being like, yeah, this is, this is sweet, but I couldn't, I don't remember really storylines or anything like that. And, and never really Tony Hale is amazing. He's great in veep too. Like he's just he's a great just actor. Great. Yeah. Like all around yeah. at that character. But, but yeah. there is shows that just don't stick for me where yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. like, yeah, I watched it and it was, it was rad, but that's it. I'm moving on. Even 30 rock as good as it was, it didn't like, it wasn't, I had to watch it. You know, yeah, it was sort of it, Kimmy the, Schmidt the was like writing, that for me too. The writing on Thirty Rock is the best. The cast, best in the biz, everything. Yep, the best. Yep. One of the best shows on. Yes, but never really. It was like it was always oh, the last thing we would watch. Yeah, and you're like, okay, let's throw it on. It was brilliant. Yes. Always brilliant. Yep. Same with Kimmy Schmidt. Same writing. Great actors across the board. The latest thing that that Tina Fey did, the Great News, is really good. What is it? It's kind. It's sort of. It, it was just her next project, basically. Is it on Netflix? It is on Netflix. Okay. I forget where it started first. Probably NBC, right? She does all things for. Wow. Well, I don't think she yeah. does other. It wasn't a straight to Netflix situation. They tried it on regular traditional media, and it didn't really work. So. Gotcha. Well, I because take Kimmy Schmidt for example. Yeah. That was a Fox show. So. I thought it went straight to Netflix. No. So it was Fox, and, and then they said no, and then, that, then Netflix picked it up. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't think she has an exclusive deal with anyone, to be honest with you. It's but yeah, that was supposed to be, that that was supposed to be Fox. Yeah. would pass on her shows, but then you get it because people don't really find it at the time that you can r- use ratings for it. They find it afterwards in these weird ways. I mean, my dad's still watching reruns of 30 Rock, right? But at the time, he never watched it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's hard with her. For me, I'm just like, how would anyone pass on a Tina Fey fucking comedy, right? That's what I I look at. So you take Kimmy Schmidt, for example, right? At the time, because that was her first show after 30 Rock. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you pass on that whatsoever. How do you not just give her the world everywhere? That's it. Just give it a shot for... 
you know, six episodes, 12 it, episodes. That's all your pickup is. And it's just go on pedigree. Instead, Fox is picking up all this other bullshit. It's like. I think you said it one time where it's like, it's almost too smart. It is, but there's an audience for it. There is, but it's not a huge one. It's not a broad, like. It's a Netflix audience, maybe. Right. Um, I'm sure the ratings were probably in the two to three million zone uh, per show, which is not good enough for network TV. So maybe, I, maybe they were correct. Who knows? Financially, only Netflix can tell you the answer to that one. Yeah. But great news. Check it out. It's a binge. It's not long. They didn't do very many episodes, but it's really. Oh, good. I caught you watching that. It's about a. It's like a news station. Yeah. But again, in. In our time now, so it's failing. It's there. You're you're just trying to keep up with the internet news right. in a traditional sense, and right. then with the interns, the older lady, the it's all like people from Thirty Rock and Kimmy and Tina Fey writing and exec producing. I mean, it has to be hilarious, yeah. and it is. So yeah, you can't keep up with the internet these days. Um, I learn that every single night. Because I watch, you know, I'm usually up late watching sports because we do the sports show and drinking bros. And, you know, we watch, try to watch all the games. So, you know, obviously we know what the fuck we're talking about. And these memes and uh, wars between the players and teams yeah. and all that thing. Because they've become celebrities in their own right now. Um, the, the fans who are watching where you're just like, all right, cool. It started with uh, the girl from, this, the, the chick from Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. uh, she was at a, a hockey game and they panned to her in the crowd and she caught yeah. it, chugged a, a wine, right? Yeah. Then it moved over. And I didn't know this, that Aaron Rodgers was a minority owner in the Milwaukee Bucks who are playing to go to the NBA finals right now. He's courtside and there was a couple other Green Bay Packers sitting courtside, uh, hit one of his offensive linemen. They, came, they cut to him the other night. Boom, throws bound two beers. Okay. Last night, they cut to Aaron Rodgers. Boom, he's throwing down a beer. Um, and you're like, all right, cool. You're watching this in real time. But on the internet, they're already going BOGO over it. Right. And you're behind. So by the time that story's running this morning on SportsCenter, you're like, dude, I watched that 48 different versions of that last night. The, even the owner of the Bucks, because Drake has been on the sidelines for the Raptors, Toronto Raptors, mm -hmm. um, talking shit to the players and rubbing coaches shoulders and stuff, which is, I, I don't even know how that's allowed. Um, but the owner of the bucks last night, when it went back to, you know, cause he's a diehard Toronto six, 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 six guy. Mm. When it went back to Milwaukee last night, the, the owner of the bucks has his hot ass daughter. She's like 22 years old. She was sitting courtside next to Aaron Rodgers. The only thing she was wearing was a giant push a T t-shirt last night. Mm hmm. To go against Drake. Didn't say a word about okay. it. Oh, Yeah. Really well okay. played. Really well played. And Wow. Yeah. And then she is a me this girl, Mallory Edens. I don't I've never heard of her. I didn't I didn't even know who owned the Milwaukee Bucks, to be honest with you. Um, nor, nor should you, unless it's like somebody crazy like a Mark Cuban or a Steve Ballmer, right? I now know who she is. She became famous overnight. They showed that her wearing that shirt. 50 million times last night and then immediately cut to Drake afterwards, like in Perfect. Toronto, he's drunk off his ass, you know, cause Toronto won. And it's like, again, all of this news is happening. You're watching it unfold online on Twitter, on all this stuff that this morning when we woke up, it was old. It was, you make I, fun of me for watching Bravo, but you just described a whole reality show. Well, no, but, but I'll tell you why is because that's how, Drama. They're treating it to get ratings and all this other stuff. And like, dude, all these people's social media accounts go up. Like homegirl last night, when she put that t-shirt on her Twitter, because she knew everybody was probably going to go to Twitter, just said, follow my Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I went to Instagram, popped up a you know, post to her or whatever. And it's, it's all become a, almost a calculated thing. But I, I, I'll tell you this, I enjoy the storylines of it. A lot of people were bitching about the Drake thing. Um, I Look, it made me tune into a game that I, you know, I, if I didn't have a sports show, I wouldn't tune in maybe to see Toronto versus Milwaukee. And that's a, that's a series of, of two of the smallest market teams in the world. And it's like, eh, all right, cool. Now I'm in it to see what the fuck's going on on the sidelines. Who's pounding beers? Who's doing all this shit? Whoever the, 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 the cryon guy you know, and the the lower third guy mm -hmm. for TNT last night when when they panned to Aaron Rodgers, it said Game of Thrones extra and NFL MVP. 
which was pretty funny because he was an extra right. in Game of Thrones the other night. And uh, yeah, I, they're making it more interesting. But news wise, you're right. Like these people trying to catch up today behind the times. That's why I started the uh, On the Rocks. On the Rocks. You and I. Yeah. That's why I started it. Why? Get people to tune in. A little bit of drama. Will they, won't they? <laughs> Divorce. A little push, a little pull. No, not little will give. they, won't they get together. Will they, won't they break up. Yeah, a little give, a little take. On the rocks won't last. A little a little yin, a little yang. <laughs> you know? A little bing, a little bang. A little bongo, <laughs> a little handsies. Um, because everyone's doing it. You gotta have a little. You gotta have a little something a to little keep spark. people. Yeah, shave interested. Your, shave your will head they? Live on air, you know? Won't they? Shave your head live on air. Just go one strip down the middle, or fry or tuck yourself. Do <laughs> you imagine if you tucked yourself? Tucked myself. Yeah. So you go fry or tuck, right? You shave. Mm -hmm. You the shave bozo the bozo ring. Yeah, you go full bozo ring. Yeah, but then cut your hair on the sides. <laughs> God, dude. <laughs> That's Britney Spears' next move, probably. Because <laughs> think about it. You have straight hair. You could comb it down, cut out a bowl cut, and then shave the top and go fry or tuck. But guys, manage like... Imagine, that would get ratings. Imagine it. I just do, I'm doing it all just... <laughs> Completely monotone. Beginning live to end. Live on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. Beginning to end. <laughs> oh, it'd be great if you tucked yourself. I'd be like, oh, man, did you Sounding tuck yourself on live? to me. Why? To be to tuck yourself sounds like no. A, you fry a or man, tuck yourself? A, a drag queen or something? No. Okay. That's getting tucked. Okay. You know, that's tucking back. Tucking back. Okay. Yeah. But if you tucked yourself, like boom, you fry or tuck yourself up top. That'd be really funny. Uh, also, for the everybody who's subscribing on YouTube, keep subscribing. But just know that I don't beat her. That is still paint. We are moving into the new studio here in it's a couple weeks. It's called stain for a reason. It does stain, right? It stains. Yeah. You can get paint off, but stain just doesn't. Just keeps going. And I going. wear gloves. It's just, you know. Yeah, you're dirty. Yeah, I'm just dirty. You're a dirty little girl out there. Yep, out there in the street. What was the phrase you used last week? A dirty ass? Dirty ass. <laughs> a little dirty ass. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, you look, you'll be back to normal soon. I just don't want people to think I'm Chris Browning you here, you know? It's well, just like a... He's and again, her. he's got to be beating is he? her. There's too many marks on the rocks. There's too many marks. He's got to be on the rocks. Beating It'll her. all come out. It'll all come out. Probably in, in mediation. <laughs> won't last. <laughs> Will they? Won't they? Yeah. Last. Well, let's see. Let's we'll see. You never know. You never know. James. Whiskey Cavalier. Yeah. <laughs> we've got a we've got a real whiskey cavalier, cavalier relationship. That, that uh, reference will not land if you're listening to this show probably not maybe in it a will. week or two weeks they in a year it. yeah they canceled it they canceled it and it'll just and for, for the, us it was a very big thing that you would for say weeks. to me back and forth so i'll i'll fill in the peeps at home uh, you know when you're watching something and it, the commercial breaks they're really pumping a show like oh that's man. like a burn notice something you'll never watch yep. or your parents will binge and love and you have never heard of so it was scott foley and this girl and they were two cia or fbi or whatever whatever the fuck they were it's um, always secret. an aging uh has been guy yeah, that's yeah. still kind of working yeah, yeah and then a hot dark-haired gal yeah that they always try and put together with a little will they won't they yeah get together not with us so these two spies were you know will, will they won't they, they? and then they named the know who what... knows but they named the show whiskey cavalier <laughs> which is the worst name for a, a tv show in the history of what man. does that mean like what? What is I don't whiskey? Know. Ca you know what I mean? Is it their two last names? I, I, Are they never watched it? Didn't care. But food and beverage. Every cops. single commercial break was stay tuned for whiskey. nineteen more yeah. weeks until Whiskey Cavalier, and it was like fuck, man. It felt like it had been out forever. They did that with a show called The Blacklist too, where I was just like, Jesus Christ! But the Christ. Blacklist is still on, is and it people really? love it. Um, Spader, I'm Spader. sorry, but Spader's, Spader's always Spader. He's gold. Anything yeah. he touches, but yeah, they were doing that. It was like after some show that we would always watch. But Whiskey Cat and the way they would say it, yeah, and it was a very just nondescript. Like I'm saying, Burn Notice. Whiskey. Like, I don't know Cavalier. what Burn Notice was about. 
I know some people watched it. Uh, uh, look, I'm gonna I'm gonna completely shit on it. So you're what? I, I'm gonna completely shit on, on burn. burn I, yeah, I watched Burn Notice. I tried to. My oh. mom my mom watches it. Exactly. Everybody's mom. Exactly. I, I feel like everybody's Blue parents bloods, watch stuff like this. USA. Like, yeah. USA uh, channel shit. I think my mom would watch anything with Tom Selleck. So she watched all of that stuff. Blue Bloods, yeah. 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 Uh, somebody got on me, uh, real quick here before we get to the sponsors. Somebody got on me for uh, this. Uh, we did a show about R- Rocket Man and uh, the new Elton John movie. Mm-hmm. And they were like, hey, you said something that, you know, this Taron Edgerton mm-hmm. uh, wasn't famous. Or wasn't uh, a thing. And they were listing off the movies um, of what he was in. He was in The Kingsman. um, I told you that. That series. uh, Robin Hood. Nobody saw that. Um, No. So, you know, when I'm looking through all of this shit. Yes, he was in The Kingsman. um, We said that. But here, here's the thing. We welcome your feedback, but we welcome your feedback, and that's all fine. Just don't I, I, be dumb. There's a difference sure. between a household name and somebody who's in a like this this Kingsman shit. Like, it's cool that you're a fan of of the Kingsman shit. Like, I think a lot of people. I mean, I recognize him from that. But, but I, he's one of the guys but, though that you know his face. You don't yes. know his name. Uh, he now, hasn't quite popped. Like even the Kingsman wasn't. I didn't think a huge. Blockbuster, maybe it was. I mean, it did well. It did, it did like $120 million domestic, which is a lot, right? Um, but there was like 90 people in that fucking movie, so it wasn't his. This is him by himself as the lead, where he will be a household name after this, versus he was one of 90 people in The Kingsman, you know? I, that's, that's too tough for me to, to get my dick behind. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, whenever there's a movie with Oh, I 80, thought there was going to be a list of... Of movies. No, that, that's what that's that's all you got. No, that's all. We that's said. all you got was the Kingsman series and shit like that. And it's just like, all right, cool, man. Um, I, like I'm good. I'm good on that. Who who's hitting you up? Uh, so, somebody messaged me and just oh. said, no, he's a super. Fan. There's a lot of. I will say this. There's a lot of Kingsman fans. People really love that franchise. Yeah. I'm, you know, and good on you. That's great. Uh, but he's not a household name yet. He's he will a, be after this movie, and it's going to be rad. And uh, he's not a Steve Zahn. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's no Steve Zahn as far as like the zeitgeist, right? <laughs> but anyways, uh, find he, me Steve Zahn. He, he I want him be. in the studio. Get him on. I'd love to have him on. I'd love to have Zahn on. I'm sure he'd take a flight. Zahn on. He's, what'd you say? He's a normal dude, just in I think like he's in Kentucky. Kentucky. We He'll cru- take we a flight to the beach. There. Bring your family, Don. I saw Dan Cummins is coming to uh, uh, North Carolina. I want to go and interview him. Dan Cummins. Yeah, he's got a great show um, called Time Suck. It's one of the top. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Top like I don't know, hundred shows on on podcast wise, and it's crazy interesting. He's one of my one of my favorite comedians. I just like him as a person. I did I did his. Uh, he used to do this morning show for Playboy Radio, so I did that a few times, and we became friends. He was the host of that. He's a really funny stand-up comedian, and they started doing this, this podcast, but it's super different. Mm-hmm. Uh, he'll examine things in history, like Hitler or uh, the plague, nice. uh, things like that, but it's really detailed, super intricate, and he'll go the fuck off. Um, I'm a fan of that dude, so uh, hopefully we can get together and do this. It'd be great. I would love that. Uh, Polly Shore is going to Raleigh. He's in Raleigh. So we're... When is Polly Shore in Raleigh? <laughs> I think it's... I want to say August sometime. Okay. But um, I can make that happen. I would love a Polly. Would you really? I can make that happen for sure. Oh, yeah. He, you know, they brought him out on stage the other night at a Foo Fighters concert went viral. Really? Yeah. Um, His father just died. So Mitzi Shore, uh, you know, her and and him, uh, well, they were, he was like 90. But Mitzi just died. I don't know. Yeah. He was very much... um, connected with his parents well his parents were fucking I mean, cool they were, they were cool were but she was shit. living with him and it was it's a you know he's yeah. going going through it I, i'm sure yeah yeah uh needless to say um his father passed away and mm-hmm. uh he was at a foo fighters concert dave Grohl brought him on stage and uh Polly mm-hmm. shore was wearing a t-shirt of his dad's face and then he sang uh there goes my hero kind of like in a coup version and it was Polly shore did no oh. uh dave Grohl. come on if I show up at a Foo Fighters concert and Polly Shore sings "There Goes My Hero," a coup, 
I fucking storm the gates and demand my money back. I would love it. No. I would love it. Absolutely not. I just not. love him. Absolutely not. Has that ever happened to you? You go to you go to a concert and then like your favorite song, somebody comes out and fucks up and you're just like, dude, get off the stage. No. Really? No. Huh. Like who? What do you mean? Huh. A special guest yeah. coming up? and So at the Hollywood Bowl, and it's because you're in L.A. and every actor wants to be a fucking musician, right? Uh, uh, they've had a few famous people come out during shows and sing like partially like part of my favorite song. Like I was at a Pearl Jam show and somebody came out and started singing uh, Daughter with, with somebody and it was like somebody famous and I was like, you fucking asshole. Okay. You I got you. Fucking I got you. Asshole. I got you. Get yeah, off yeah, the yeah, stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 I was just like, just because you're famous, like, don't fuck up my experience mm-hmm. because you want to go on stage and sing. Like, that's somebody else's favorite song. You know? I got you. Don't you put your wiener inside of me on this. You can put it in, in me for a lot of things. Not this. You know? I'm paying money to see that band, not some actor get up there and fucking glad hand me with his shitty karaoke version of my favorite song. Sure. You know? Mm-hmm. Don't you reach up my skirt and grab my ding dong on St. Patrick's Day. Right. You know, right. don't you jangle my taters in my fucking burlap sack just because you want to get your rocks off on stage. <laughs> Sing my favorite song, you piece of shit. Uh, you fucking piece of shit. Shit. Perfect segue into the sponsors. Black Rifle Coffee. That'll, that'll bring out the shit in you. you have a couple sips of that. Boom, apple milkshake. You're ready to go, ready to start your day. I like how I said that right in your backswing as you were drinking Black Rifle Coffee. On <laughs> The look on your face says it all right now. And if you're not subscribing to the YouTube show, you should because that look said it all. You mid-sip of coffee, boom, apple milkshake. And it, I think it all registered at once. Sure. You know? Yeah, sure did. A lot of people have asked me to make a apple milkshake t-shirts. Nope. Uh, we're going to say no to that one, but we are, we are going to make Summer of Swayze t-shirts with Lead by Iron. So I'm fucking amped about that. Uh, I just saw them and uh, yeah, brother. The Summer of Swayze. Uh, stoked about that. Stoked about BlackRifleCoffee.com. Beans, bags, instants. You name it, they got it. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com right now. Premium roast-to-order coffee made with the hands of veterans and delivered straight to your house. I've been getting the fucking subscription for two years. I love it. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Learn it, live it, love it. Next up, we got GhostBed.com forward slash drinking bros. Sleep's so good, it's scary. This is airing on Memorial Day the night before. They got a deal. They got a deal. They got a Memorial Day deal. Oh, oh. Memorial sale. I'll tell the nabes. Do. Definitely do, man. They're fucking doing it, dude. Um, one of my favorite all-time companies. I'm going to bring it up, man. Because it's just, I feel like every fucking week they're doing a, a new goddamn deal. Yeah. And like For I a said, product this high quality, they don't have to do shit. At ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. And I go there price right now. checked because I price checked, I said, with the nabes. The other brands, right? Yep. The other top brands. We don't need to say them. But price-wise, Ghostbed's the best. And yes, I is, know is, for a is, fact for that sure. quality it is, is, is better. They don't know that, but I can tell them. Because I've slept on every bed in my house. Yeah. Um, so here, here, here's the deals here. $100 off uh, Ghostbed. $200 off the, the, the Ghostbed Deluxe. They got a new Ghostbed Flex. Come on, man. With all this shit, and this is just a, as a regular human, you're getting free sheets. We just got those fucking sheets, those cooling sheets. They're amazing. They're like, the best. Dude, they were giving away free pillows. Now they're giving away free sheets. How are they staying in business? I love it. I fucking love these guys. If you're military or first responder, you get an extra 15% off, as always. And um, the shit's guaranteed, man. It's uh, like, dude, if you don't like it, you can send it back in 30 days. Also, 36 months, pay-as-you-go program, no interest at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. How do you get better than this? You really just don't. Um, I can't believe that. You get an extra 200 bucks off for fucking Memorial Day, too. That's sweet. Memorial Day is the time to buy furniture, by the way. The best It is. Sales. Why is that? 
I don't know, but all the best sales are in furniture. If you're looking to do the bed thing, do it Memorial Day because that is going to be the time. Yeah. Grab yeah. your couch, grab your bed, grab do your it. new mattress. Ghostbed.com we'll forward slash drinking bros today. Get on it. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. We tape, we usually tape the Monday shows on a Friday so we can have the weekend to party. 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 I like to party. Party with Barbie. I like to party. We're going to fucking party Friday. this weekend, James. Friday. Yeah. It's gorgeous here in Wilmington, North Carolina. It is going to be a beach mother grabbing weekend. Uh, a ridge, lemon, grape, orange, all of that is going into my vodka. Probably drinking vodka all weekend. Vodka sodas. Um, looking forward to it too, man. Energy. I need it. Those long beach days, I get a little sleepy after going to the beach. The sun takes it out of me like a baby still. Yeah, you do. Um, that's my weakness. That's my one weakness in this earth. I'm strong uh-huh. as fuck. And everything in this life, one weakness but is But if you get out in the, on the sun, sun for a little bit, mm, we need to take a little snack. I'd take a little siesta. Uh, but I'm going to try to stay up with Strikeforce Energy you should too go to strikeforceenergy.com 10 pack 40 pack 750 milliliter bottle use the promo code revolution for 20% off they also have a subscription of the month and it's smooth it's real nice Uh, promo code revolution strikeforceenergy.com last but not least is what you came for Jabes Oh, that's Straight a clean razors.com. cut. That's yeah. a clean cut. Smooth. Go for it. Are you right? Uh, happy Memorial that's Day. That's what happens when you tell me to do it. Happy Memorial Day I do Day it when I want to you. do it. Um, man, that is... That is, I mean, that's still ringing in this. It's, it's the sure. right ear. It's right. I'm trying to figure out which ear that's still yeah. ringing. In. It's the right ear. Definitely yeah, the right yeah, ear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, straightrazors.com. Everything you need to shave as a man in this life. This is the time to get your dad a shaving kit for Father's Day. Get on it, dude. This will uh, this will make him love you again. He probably doesn't at home. Doesn't love you? Yeah. No. Nope. nope. Get him. Get him a kit. You can get it engraved too if if you're. You worried about your your father uh, being a pussy with a straight razor? Give him a safety razor. Same thing. Right. Blade lasts longer. Give him that smolder aftershave. Um, beard oil, shampoos, conditioners, mustache waxes, everything to groom yourself as a man in this life. Uh, straightrazors.com has it. Promo code REVOLUTION20% off. And the new book is uh, Matt Best. Thank you for my service. Uh, wrote it about my bestie. Amazon, go hardback. Uh, that, that's what will get us on the New York times, a bestseller list. Um, that's coming out soon. Jabes. I want to talk about this Amazon thing right off the top. Um, mood rings now have become a thing that they're trying to teleport into humans minds. So they're working on a device that can read human emotions. I mean, yours is pretty easy all day long. It's just ambivalent. You know, pure, me, yeah, my mood, aloof, yeah, yeah, <laughs> not too much going on up you there. <laughs> the only thing is, I wouldn't want a, a mood ring to tell people that, right? <laughs> it's a voice activated wearable device. They're not going to say what it is, but it can recognize human emotion. I, I'm going to be honest, man, it's you're just talking into a mood ring at this point, right? Why would you need that? What's the benefit? I guess the benefit is this. You could walk up to people on the streets uh-huh. and see if they're in, a, in they're friendly, no. in a good mood, bad That's mood. Fucking stupid as shit. Be weird, right? Why would you ever want that? Our whole society is based on fucking putting on a mask so we can <laughs> live our lives, right? Can you imagine? Like when you ask somebody, how you doing? Yeah. You don't want to know how they're fucking really doing. Mm-hmm. I want to hear, great, how are you? Yeah. So I can feel good too, go about my day. I don't want to talk about what's really going on, Oof. except for on this show. I do it to you guys. But. Yeah. Could you imagine getting trapped in one of those combos? Let's say you see some chick, right? She's got a, a red, her, her, let's say it's a bracelet because I don't know what the fuck this thing's going to be. It's a wearable. Whenever they say that, it's usually some form of bracelet or watch, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say you, you rolled up to somebody with a, a red bracelet and they, and they were angry. I don't want to talk to them. I don't want to know your fucking problems. 
No. I don't want to get caught in an, in a half hour conversation no. about some dumb shit from some guy you liked on Tinder. I don't want to get I don't want to know anything about that part mm-hmm. of your life. Mm-hmm. I really don't. But it would make me gravitate more towards like the let's say it was like a Carolina blue that meant like happy. I kind of gravitate towards those people and be like, hey man, what's up? Unless you're on the red. Yeah. But then I wouldn't want you wa- don't want to go to the happy people. What 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 do you think yours would be? Yeah, is there a tan? What's the tan? Like mean? a beige. What does it mean though? Just whatever. Like I don't fucking care. <laughs> Being happy is d- like trying to be blending happy. Blending in. So a tan or a beige trying would be Trying to be happy like is dumb. Just blending in with the world. And then being too depressed, you know, fucks up relationships in your life. So, you know, just fucking move through. Move. Go with the fucking flow of traffic, please. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's all. I don't, I don't want to. You just, uh, so a beige is like a blend in. You just want to blend in with the crowd. A beige is just like, yeah. I don't. Mine would probably. Am I super happy? No. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is it okay with me? Yeah. <laughs> I've got shit to do. I don't need to worry about. You know what I mean? I would do it for my kids. Yeah. I'd get the bracelet for my kids yeah. and just make sure they're always on blue. Yeah, yeah of, course. of course. And then if they're not, just be like, it's okay if you're not happy all the time. Only stupid people want to be happy all the time. <laughs> it's fucking dumb. So I think my- what would it be right now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Fire engine red. I think mine would be just angry most of the, like, you know. Yeah, and I don't want to know that. (laughs) Well, not only that, but if you're at work, right? You're you're dealing with calls or invoices or whatever the fuck it is, right? Right. You're not going to be super stoked about shit. And then if you get that great phone call, then you'll be happy after that. But it's like, again, Mm -hmm. hide your emotions. Bury your feelings down way deep inside. Push them deep down inside. Don't need it. Deal with them in the car. You know what I mean? On the way to and from work, cry, yell, talk to yourself. Yeah. All the things I do. <laughs> and then when you have to meet with people. Hey. And I guess maybe I don't even really care. I, when I'm talking to someone else, I don't really care how, how I feel. I guess I would want to know. Maybe the challenge would be like making their red turn to blue. Right? I guess. That's a lot of work, man. I don't even right. want to fucking do that. Right. It's like, dude, yeah, you can go home and kill yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't need to know it. Right. I just don't need to know it. Yeah. I don't. I don't <laughs> need to know it. The other thing, I, and like, I feel like, I feel like a lot of the news is dominated by the same three companies most of the time. It's usually Amazon, yeah, because, Google, and, and Facebook, right? Yeah, because we're moving into the dystopian society where they actually all rule the world and we don't have presidents or government anymore. Correct. What? Correct. Mm-hmm. So this is a perfect segue because you don't know this story. This is a breaking story. Right. Um, Facebook plans to launch a cryptocurrency in 2020. Mm-hmm. Everything you just said is exactly what's... And we do it to ourselves. What's the book? Yeah. Like 1942 something. 1984? 1984. We do it to ourselves. Yeah. We do it. Yeah. 100%. Without even just going, uh, 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 and then all of a sudden <laughs> it'll be, it doesn't matter who's in office because the real people that will be running everything will be, what do you, what do you reckon? Amazon? Yeah. I, look, after Zuck. I read this, look, this story just uh, broke right now. Um, Apple. It's, it said that he, yeah, exactly. But Apple's got Apple Pay, right? So they're, they're already kind of in that space, right? Yeah. Um, not in cryptocurrency yet, but they're no. getting close. They're still having to use banks. It said Zuckerberg government. met with uh, the governor of the, the Bank of England. Again, England, get your shit together with all these fucking weird people. Parliament and white wigs and parties that aren't parties. You're not you're a democracy, but you're not a democracy. You have a governor of a bank. Like, pff, Jesus Christ, man. Which is endless government. Um, but he said he met with the governor of this bank in England. This has been going on for a while. My question is, is why the only person, I don't know that this makes sense for Facebook, right? Because what are you going to buy? I guess, you know, Facebook's putting up those things where you can buy and sell things now. You mm-hmm. see those? So I, I guess maybe you could do it with that or, or whatever. It, it makes sense, though, for Amazon. I, like, I'm surprised they didn't, they weren't the first ones to do this. Mm-hmm. Because we're buying 90% of our shit on Amazon these days. Why wouldn't you just be doing it with Amazon money then? I don't like, 
Really shocked that Facebook is the is the first one out of the gates with this. Or thinking about it. Yeah. Because, I mean, Amazon, fuck, I'm in. If I was thinking about this the other day, right? We have cards for business that give you, you know, cash back on gas or flights or whatever for mm-hmm. businesses, right? Mm-hmm. If there was a cash back card for Amazon and some form of cryptocurrency for that that was giving me money back from all the shit I buy on Amazon... With the amount of shit I buy on Amazon, massive savings, right? Right. Um, fuck, man. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really surprised they got beat uh, on this one. Or, or maybe, look. Maybe they just let Zuckerberg just go out and fail. And then, <laughs> and then they, they kind of they come in. pick up the pieces. Yeah, because if you look at it, like uh, the Facebook, that watch, that Facebook watch is failing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, just hasn't caught. Uh, talked to some people behind the scenes. Um, who were partners with it who were you know monetizing with Facebook watch and I was like how is that doing and they were just like it's not doing well at all because they were they're doing all these TV shows and all this other shit uh, Apple's gonna have original programming and all that stuff and it's like all right why don't you go out and fail Facebook and then somebody else will yeah they just send the little kick the dicks around little ch- the little ch- ch- chode monsters no what's the is that what you're going what's for what's the stuff chum chum yeah to the sharks it's a Memorial Day weekend. You should know that. Jaws. Stay away from the beach. They said there's a great white heading to Don't. Long Island. Oh, okay. Yeah. Keep the Somewhere kid in the Staten Island or something. There's like a the kid out kid, of the Yeah, water. there's a great white heading that way. <sighs> if you know where it's at, why don't you trap that motherfucker? Like, if right. you don't send out a warning. What, like, like it's that. hard? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scoop it up, dude. What, like it's hard? Just catch it. Yeah. Duh. 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 Blast it. Throw a fucking stick of dynamite at that thing. Watch that fucker explode out of the water. That'd be great. Really great. Because is there, they, they, some people have fireworks for Memorial Day. Let's blow up a fucking yeah. shark, dude. Nothing says America like blowing up a great white. Just take an old stick of dynamite, right? Mm-hmm. And just get a, like an old, right the... old sailor. Yeah. You know, just the older, like a, you know, a Rene That's what they Barb. did in Jaws, That's right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Bring one of those guys out and be like, hey, man. Here's a fucking stick of dynamite. Go and find the shark and blow it up, dude. That would be the ultimate firework display. Just a blown up great white. Just chunks of they have, blubber they have falling done down that on people. Or like a, a fail is they tried to blow up a whale. That died on the beach, yeah. yeah. I saw that. It was awesome. And it was just chunks of whale Shit everywhere. falling yeah. on people's cars. Because like people were watching from really far away. But this is in the ocean. So, I, you know, boom. It's controlled. So, you know, boom. Right? I, want, I want to see that shit go down. I do. I do, Jabes. Uh, the debates are coming up in a month. I know we've been talking about this. Uh, it is, we are one month from today from these debates. Fun fact, because um, I, was, I was thinking, like, there's 24 people in the, 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 the race for the Democrats, right? That's it? Yeah, no big deal. No big deal. They're cutting it off at 20, they said. So four people are going to be cut before the debates. And they just announced that today. So Cut totally from the... You're not going to be able to, to, to get a spot on the stage. Um, are you still going to be in the race? Well, that's the thing. You can't really run if you can't debate. debate so you're yeah. not, not going to get any fucking money. So if you're one of the four people that gets cut from How this, do they you're decide? done. I guess they're deciding on who is entering. Percentage, probably. No, who is entering before. So like the first 20 people. And then oh, I oh, guess oh. de Blasio, you know, we talked about a couple weeks ago. He's... Uh, on the chopping block because he was like 22nd or 23rd and they're kind of going to decide for that last spot and that's it. The The other three people they named that were on the chopping block, I hadn't, I hadn't even heard of. Mm, cool. I Perfect. never even, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But that's going to be a bitch fest that's going to be starting next month because mm. you're watching all this shit unfold with like Pelosi and uh, Trump these days, right? And it's it feels like this ginormous distraction and you're like, from what? To not, have people recognize that in, in, in a month people are going to be tearing each other's faces off on stage. I am right. so in for all of that. And usually I'm not because it we're heading into the, the, the summer doldrums, right? NBA finals uh, ends in June. NHL finals end in June. You're midway through the baseball season where it's just like, man, I don't really care that much. You know, like mm-hmm. these middle games in a 162 game season don't really care. Kind of waiting for football to start in August. Usually, like, hopefully, it's like Summer Olympics or like the World Cup. You know, we'll, we'll eat up that time. Not anymore, Sally. 
We're going to have this this shit all summer. And I'm going to sit down like it's game fucking seven for all of it. Because 20 people on a stage, they're going to go 10 and 10. It's going to be a bloodbath, brother. So I'm actually excited for a little summer programming. And then, you know, we'll flip on the circus and see what's going on. Are they coming back? Are they they coming coming back in the fall? They have to. This is their golden age of that. Yeah. Well, their turnaround is so fast that. I think they'll just start. I mean, they literally shoot, edit, and put it up in like a day. So, so I think they just kind of go whenever. Because right? they're all Democrats, are they going to fucking eat their own on that show? Because there's no, there is no Republican challenger right now. So there's, therefore, Trump's got a year off where he's just like, all right, cool, man. I'm just waiting until next July. Do We're they good. Just stay out of it. I don't know. I, I don't either. And that's what I'm really curious about. When you build your show. Towards and that's fine. Like you, you want to build your show left and lean left. That's fine. I, I really don't have a problem with it. But, but your when your your political show that is called the circus based on the political circus of all of this How shit. How crazy it is! You have to be doing the debate. This is the only the thing you're circus. covering. Yeah. yeah, that's the only thing you're covering. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure they will. I mean, they'd be fucking stupid if they didn't. Yeah. Um. And then the last thing I, w- I want to chat about here is this Assange. What's up? What's up with Rip Van Winkle? 18. I know. Actually, there's a few more things I want to chat about. Let's go. Let's go along. Who cares today? Who fucking cares today? Um, he's up like 18 charges, right? Some are recommending the death penalty. I don't think, I think it's a little much um, or life in prison or whatever. There's a lot of people who are saying that he's a journalist and him exposing all of this shit is journalism or whatever. And, and that it's, it's going to kill the First Amendment, you know, freedom of speech. I don't know the answer to that. That he was working with, uh, who's the fucking dude, Chelsea Manning? Um, yeah, I mean, he was. I'm not calling her. Yeah, I'm not calling it a girl. I'm just not. Well, what's his name then? Brad something. Whatever his Bradley. name is. He's a, uh, well, I'll call him Chelsea, but he's a fucking dude. Oh, okay. Like, right. let's face it, you got a sex change to get out of, get yourself out of gen pop with the dudes. Right, right. So, uh, that, you know, he's in, he's in jail and all this shit, and, and he was the one that helped out and everything. I don't, I, you know, more, the more I thought about it with this whole thing, I, I don't know what the answer is anymore because you have so much fake media. You have so much fake news with all of this shit. You have all of these quote unquote top journalists. I'm using heavy air quotes on top journalists yeah. um, and top news agencies like, like a CNN or uh, like a Fox or whatever. Like they're running fake stories, man. Um, so why are they trusted and you know this guy can't fucking steal some info and pop it out to the public because yeah. those guys are stealing info like w- w- when you when you read the the Washington Post right or the New York Times cuz they they get a lot those two in particular get a lot of fucking stories wrong and they've mm-hmm. always got to have redactions and all that shit or I'm sorry retractions um thinking of my, thinking of Matt Best book all those redactions but I had they, to do for that fucker I um, don't think the charges are just putting um, information out there it's espionage so it's stealing from the government and then putting it out there but okay. it's if you th- if you think about it and here's the argument right it's, uh, and again washington post new york times when they report on fake stories on the president let's take this steel dossier with the the pissing the russian prostitutes pissing on a bed mm-hmm. or whatever like mm-hmm. which is the most ridiculous and made-up story of all time they claim sources sources in the white house sources in the fbi sources in the cia told me this and it was true all of this was true what's the difference what's the difference if this guy's going in there and stealing you know information and then putting it out in the public they're creating stories that are you're essentially just made up or stealing sources that i think the information that he puts out can gets people killed but so does this the president pissing on Yes, yeah. that could he could have lost the election from that steel dossier, yeah. and also but not killed. But, but it could have it, it triggered this whole Russia hoax thing. This whole Russian investigation for the last two years was triggered on a fake document and dossier. Like it could have created a, a, a world war. I mean, for real, if you believed it, and let's say it, it turned out to be true, right? That Russia rigged our elections. That could trigger a fucking world war. That has more serious implications than, you know, the other shit that's out there. Like, to me, triggering a world war is, is a lot more than, all right, cool, man. Here's some stolen emails. And, and look, most of those stolen emails, like the, the fa- I didn't know 
a homegirl was was given Hillary Clinton the questions to debates and shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't we know that? What yeah. if that? What? So my my I guess my thing with, is is this: if it came from a source, mm-hmm. or you just took the information. Either way, the information out there exists. Which is worse, having a source and reporting it and it being fake, or having somebody go in there and rip it and it's real? Yeah. Then it's real news. I I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And like, this is the first time I I genuinely ever sat down and thought about it where I was like, man, in today's society, which is worse that he actually got the real shit or that somebody else is telling us fake shit. Yeah. And which the debate of, is this journalism or not? Finally opened up my eyes to just at least ask the question of like, great. Let's say this was Matt Drudge. Let's say Julian Assange was Matt Drudge found all of this shit from Somebody else. Let's say somebody else was stealing this and then he got it and just released it. What's the difference? What's your answer to it? Um, well, you know, I don't think that we should know everything. I know that. Um, that, so, that we should know everything, but, but we do, I, right? And there's nothing you can do about it now. But who's, uh, journalistic-wise, mm-hmm. is there anyone you trust fully, 100%, with your information? Um... No, I guess not, not completely. So all of it is these sources, and they mm-hmm. always say sources, sources have told so-and-so. We don't know who they are. With this, we knew it was Julian Assange. We knew he was ripping you know, the WikiLeaks mm-hmm. and was stealing shit and then just putting it out. But with, with, with him, I, I at least knew it was real. Yeah. Like these emails weren't fake. So what's the difference, I guess? Because, you know, back in the day... Woodward and Bernstein and those guys would go in. Mm, I'll go to prison for my source and I'll fucking keep them safe. Well, cool. Assange was your source now who mm-hmm. made all this media. What's the difference? And I'm not a, a Julian Assange fan. Um, his whole shit is super weird and I, I, I don't really give a shit about it uh, at all. Like if he goes to jail forever, it's not going to affect my life in the slightest. But looking at it from a journalistic standpoint now, and hearing the debate that's going on, I don't know. Because he's saying you're giving up government secrets. Well, people in the White House uh, have been giving up government secrets of things that go on with the president or uh, the Speaker of the House, you know, the FBI, all that shit. Like, what's the difference between a source who's telling you shit that's in there or this guy who's just taking it? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And I think this is only going to become more and more complex as things go on in this society. I mean, I, I sat down and watched David Muir last night. Mm-hmm. Um, all of his stories seem to have a fucking fake slant now. And I'm like, man, that never used to be the case. What is it? What made you think that? Just how he reported it? Yes, or? and it's the wording of it. If you, okay, if you yeah, listen yeah, yeah. to the yeah, wording yeah. of what he's saying... It all goes back to Trump in a negative way where it's like, man, that's a story that really didn't have anything to do with Trump. And you mm-hmm. slanted it. Yeah. But, but right towards the end, just the last yeah. sentence of the story will be like, and as you know, the president, Donald Trump, is going through a tariff situation with China. And you're like, man, that had nothing to do with the fucking story you just told right now. Yeah. So, New York Times, the uh, podcast does that all the time. They'll do this whole story. And then at the very end, they'll say, uh, and here's what else you need to know today. And they do kind of these bullet point just right. little things. Right. And it's always, they'll just leave you on this sentence of, you know, and the president has not yet responded or something where it's like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They just kind of leave you with a little, oh, Think. They don't even go into that story. No. They just say the little blurb. That's what I'm talking about. And leave it like cut to black. And you're kind of like, oh, but what? Okay. I feel like you could have elaborated on that, but yeah. it was better for you to just say that one little dig. Dig. Yeah. And then cut to black. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I hear you. It, it'd be like me saying to you, man, you look incredibly beautiful today. Your hair looks amazing. And uh, can't wait to see that different jacket you're going to be wearing next week. Cut, cut to black. Yeah. Right. And you're like, wait, what? Huh? Did yeah. he? So, I kind of feel like. I, feel, I kind of feel like. It's like it was right, like he right, just right, right, right. And then, hated my jacket. But, and, it sound, but it was like in the same tone? Yeah. 
And that that's but what did he all hate of, it? Yeah, or did, does he, he like another jacket? jacket too? Yeah. Yeah. And that's no, what all it. of this 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 journalism is like today and it was just like, man, I don't I don't remember that 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 dude being like that. And and again, it goes both ways. So I'm not even saying cuz Fox does it too. So it's just like Fox and CNN do it as well. Like I I don't But the, the, them I at least know like yeah. hey I know I flip on Fox News, I'm getting far right. Flip on uh, yeah. CNN, I'm getting far left. I don't want to see that on ABC where it's free. It's a free channel. It's mm-hmm. local. You're, right. you're supposed to be just reporting the fucking news. Right. And you're not. Um, so that's where it sucks uh, for me. And, and all of this journalism and Assange and all this other stuff, it's like, well... I will say this, looking back at all of it now and thinking about it, like Assange was just putting out shit. He had no slant on it. It was what it was. It was just Which in my mind is more dangerous. Probably. Because it depends the, on who the, you are. The point, I would love in a dream world, I would love to, and the journalists are supposed to, you know, they get that information and filter it to explain it to the majority of dum dums, which we all are, right? Right. So we're the dum-dums. The journalists are supposed to be the middleman between all of this information. So they're supposed to sort through it and explain it to us in a way that we can understand right. and give us what we need and, and leave out what would hurt us, basically. Freak us out, cause frenzies, the undo, right? Yeah. Um, that's not how it is. But as you know, these leaks and these just like email dumps and all of these things, I... I don't agree with and I don't like but if you're saying that you can't trust the journalist to filter it in the right way I guess it's the only way that you guys can get again I don't think we should know everything I don't think we should know everything that's going on I just don't yeah good or bad I just don't I think it takes away from and it's all distractions that we don't need we don't need to know why they're working on something and what their exact plan is for something unless it is going to hurt us. And if it is, that's when the journalists should step in and let the people know what they need to know to help themselves, not to cause some kind of frenzy and stress yourself out over something you can do nothing about. Right. Right. So in a perfect world, that's how it would work. And I think these email dumps and these leaks just fuck with that whole situation. But Cause I mean, I, I, people I look at like it. There's people that don't, I, I don't look at know. it like this. Like I, I don't remember too much of the week, the WikiLeaks things. Um, cause there was so much like the one that stuck out the most, I guess was when, uh, they hacked into the, the DNC's emails and they, they got, they found out that, you know, Hillary was getting all those questions and what they were doing against Bernie Sanders. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't like, I wanted to know that. And I didn't like that. And I felt bad for Bernie. I don't, Look, socialism's fucked up and it'll never work. Uh, take a, take a three-day trip to Venezuela if you want to have a little peek, see uh, uh, what's behind that curtain. But I feel bad that a, a normal person in society in America who's running for president does not get a fair shot. And I, th- I think after those... Nobody wiki- gets a fair shot in politics. But hang on. I'm sorry. But, but with, the, with the WikiLeaks thing, I think he was this close. And I genuinely, after reading what he released, I genuinely think Bernie would have won uh, over Hillary. Okay. And he might have at, at the time... He wouldn't have won over Trump, though. So it's the I, same I, I don't. I don't know. I, I actually don't know. Uh, for real. Because if you remember, there was a Bernie frenzy that was going on. And like, who's to say, and there was a Trump frenzy that was going on. Who's to say head to head, what would have happened? I think Hillary was the weaker opponent out of the two. I don't know what would have happened. And that was close as fuck. Mm -hmm. I don't know what would have happened with Bernie. He could have won. And that's, to me, would have changed the course of United States history. So, yeah, I wanted wanted to know that. Um, Do you agree that there's some things that they put out that cause undue you know, harm. Yeah, absolutely. Frenzy of people that don't even know what they're reading. Yes. Oh, th- WikiLeaks, they dropped it. What it, what is it? What does it say? But, uh, but and I, it's like, I also feel like that about every article with the Washington post and the New York times or whatever. Like, again, you, you listen to that podcast all the time. So does Evan. Evan listens to that as well. More or because less. Because we want to get all angles, but yeah. Correct. And, and try to get the news going, yeah. right? I read so much news that I don't, I don't need to listen to a, a podcast, right? I also think they're under such fire that they double, double, double check their sources now. 
But anyways, go ahead. No, I don't think so. I mean, it, they still have a slant. Did but you as see far that? As putting something out. Did you see the video with uh, all of them cut together from every time they said, this is the bombshell that we've all been waiting for, for Trump and Russia? Oh. It was 50,000 posts from Washington Post, New York Times, but all that other shit. But they're doing that in Congress too, so it's, it's everywhere. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. So if it's everywhere, right? Why couldn't Assange be part of this, this whole shit? Why couldn't he, he be the dude? Why couldn't he be a, a, the, the TMZ of just shit? Somebody's leaking these stories to TMZ too. Because like, you can't leak classified documents. I'm sorry. You just, there are laws. You just can't. I don't know. I would rather have the real source than the, the so you're fake. Saying there's I'd rather have real counts against this guy that I would, is total I would, bullshit. No, it's not. It's not okay. total bullshit. It is. What he's being charged for is exactly what is is law, and that is what he should be what charged you're for. Saying what I'm we saying have is a this different world. Well, no, what, what I'm saying is this. He's actually giving us real news as opposed to a fake source or whatever. So what's, I guess, but real news unfiltered. How bad is it? Real news unfiltered. You were asking me what I think is worse. So real news unfiltered, I think, can cause more harm than fake news, personally. Okay. And that's my answer. That's how I felt about these email leaks, these dumps, these things where, you know, people want to see behind every single curtain and it's just we cannot handle it i promise you dum dums and i'm one of them <laughs> do you know what i'm saying I can there's a the chips. I can, yeah I can and there are it. a couple people that can yeah. honestly a couple evan you there's there's certain people that have you know the are, mental capability where it doesn't affect me in my day doesn't affect you in your day you don't get frenzied up you don't start a fucking protest for no reason you know it's like that's most people yeah if you tell them to get riled up about something, if you tell them they're supposed to do it, yeah. they'll do it. Yeah, I, I'm, I hear so you. So I do think it does more harm personally, but what uh, the fuck do I know? Yeah, what do you know, Jabes? Uh, you get a crime corner? Do you, have, do you know I that? I do. You do? You get, yes. a, you get a crime corner today. Crime corner for Jables. <laughs> <laughs> So, gosh, it's been a while since we checked in on our... You always seem so surprised by this, too. By what? Like, by the Crime Corner segment, you know? What? Uh, I do hard-hitting research right before the show. <laughs> Is that what you... I skim. I go off headline and then visual in my mind, and then I kind of read it in front of you. And we kind of do it together, huh, guys? <laughs> Shane Goodman, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. He's but he your, sends he's your... me the best shit. He is my top. I mean, Rick Aben too. You're the you know you're the head. those those two guys send you the 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 shit, dude. Yeah, but anyway, so uh, I feel like I feel like this. So let, I, we'll put an open invitation out to Shane Goodman if he comes to Wilmington, North Carolina. Once we open up the new studio, we've. He I mean, can come in and be on the show and do his own crime corner. How about that? His own crime where corner. Does he live? If he doesn't do you know feel where he comfortable lives? doing that, he can definitely run up, hand me the crime. The copy? Yeah. 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 In uniform. <laughs> yeah. In full cop uniform. Full cop uniform. Actually, Rick would be actually have the uniform. To Either do one. That. So yeah. I, we'll leave the invitation open to Rick, Rick Abend and uh, Shane Goodman. And then you guys if they're get in out the area, here. if they're in Wilmington and they want to cruise by, because we're going to have like couches and shit in there where people can drink and watch the shows. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Come on in. Um, so, parent, uh, parrot. I'm sorry, not parent. Yeah. Parrot detained for warning drug dealers about police. So, they did write a little something. It almost feels like just for me. Uh, parrot keeps beak shut. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't rat on him. He kept his beak shut. <laughs> Come on. You know I love that. What do you that. need to do? What do you, just, just a little. Give it, just give him a little rap on the right? beak. A little rap on the beak. <laughs> like It'll I said, they write these things for me sometimes. Yeah. Kept his beak shut. As he should. He didn't Anyways, snitch. He didn't snitch. So parents are, parents are really smart. As we know, we can teach them all kinds of things, languages to repeat you. Now, these Brazilian drug dealers taught this parrot to alert them to be a lookout basically for the police. Smart. While they're doing I mean, their smart, doing their dirty deeds, yeah. dunder cheap. Yeah. 
<laughs> so the unnamed parrot makes me sad. I did want some kind of name to be associated with the parrot, but Ricky. unnamed parrot, he may be in witness protection, was taken into custody. He was a minor. Just taken into custody, yep. right? Yeah, but uh, they cuffed him. Cuffed him to little cuffs. Little tiny cuffs, On yep. the arm, yeah. Took him into custody in northern Brazil following a police raid targeting crack dealers. Um, police seized the bird in hopes of getting more information out of him. Yeah. What were they going to do? Talk to him. Talk to Shake him. Shake him down. I would love to see the footage. Defeather him. You know those oh, the fucking man. surveillance type footage of them questioning the bird? Who comes what in? What do you know? Right. Yeah. Who com- is it an animal expert who comes in and talks to the parrot? You bring somebody over from the zoo? I mean, it does, you know, no. The bird reportedly was taught to alert criminals of nearby police and apparently was found calling mum the police. That's what he would say. Mum the police. In Portuguese, not even English. Okay. Say in Portuguese. Look at that. Great. Right around the time that the cops were preparing to raid the home, they heard this this bird, and they thought, "Uh, Mm. we need to take him in. He knows more. He knows more than he's leading on, right? Yeah. Um, he must have been trained for this. Now, this is the Guardian, Washington Post. I mean, this is real. Um, I have to go into that microphone. There you go. Um, unfortunately for the criminals, the feathered lookout was unable to warn its owners in time. So they got popped, huh? They got popped. He didn't warn. He didn't warn them in time. So probably if he if he gets taken back to the house or the owner, I mean he's dead anyways. Yeah. So he is. Uh, I mean this is this is a bad situation for him. He's either going to jail, or he's gonna die, or he's gonna get killed. Yeah. Because he a didn't do his job. Yep. Well, he didn't rat, though. He didn't snitch. Yeah. So Maybe he'll do his time and then pop out on the other side. He was brought back to the station for questioning. But the bird has chosen to plead the fifth. Huh. <laughs> this is so you stupid. Don't say. But how did he do that? What did he say? I plead the fifth? Come on. I don't know. Look, I don't know. Either way, I, I'm proud of the bird for you. not snitching. He, he allegedly got off easy. And I'm, I'm, I'm also. He was eventually sent to a local zoo to ah. be to be trained to fly and eventually released. There you go. And then killed. If they don't get him in witness protection, they will find him once he gets released from the zoo. Don't yeah. you think? I think so. Because he'll probably fly execution style. Why wouldn't he fly back to the drug dealer's house? They had to train him to fly. Oh, he doesn't fly. Doesn't fly. All right. So he doesn't know where that, that yeah. is. Domesticated, kept in a cage. I still, the whole I, time. I still think my money is that he flies back to the drug dealers. I think it's the scent, right? You yeah. get that scent in your beak, and you know. I think they're where smarter than like a homing pigeon, but yeah. I do too. Mm-hmm. So my money is that he goes they're back to the drug to dealer's not, house. Though, yeah, it's, it's where a, a pigeon will just like go back to where Stockholm Barrett syndrome. Oh, there you go. You know where, where he goes back. He kept his beak shut. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Proud of you. That was a nice crime corner. Thanks. Shane Goodman's your boy. Uh, we'll get Thanks. to the revolutionary figure of the day, Jabes. You ready? I'm ready. Um, this one uh, is going out to Samuel Morse. You know Morse. Nope. Morse code. Okay. 175 years ago today, uh, Washington, D.C. to Baltimore. Um, he sent the first fucking electric telegraph. You know, he sent the first telegraph, Jabes. Wow. Very first communication from one place to another. Imagine if that motherfucker was alive today and saw text messages, Snapchat, filters, Mm -hmm. and you'd be like, yo, this is what I started? WikiLeaks. (laughs) Imagine him getting on, you know, WhatsApp and being like, what? Wow. I can go to, we can go to other countries for free and just talk into a device? I would alter his mind. One dude did this, and it was him. He started this whole fucking That's shit. That's crazy. This whole shit wagon was started by him. And, um, you know, he made, he made it easier to send messages. But, I mean, for real, if you really think about this, that's the dude who started all of this shit. And now it's, you know, a bunch of girls with rabbit ears posting videos of themselves around the world. Yeah. There's nothing I hate more than that, by the way. The, bu- the like dog face. Any girl who puts a dog face or a like a cute yeah. like bunny 
bunny ears or a bunny nose on their things and like that's their whole thing. I fucking I hate I automatically hate those people. Yeah. I do. And I have friends that do it too and I'm like I hate you. Yeah. 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 Let them know. Let a friend know you hate them today, guys. I did. Is it weird? What? I did. To um, who? Somebody I mean, don't say. I'm but. not going to say to who, but somebody had asked me advice for her and her boyfriend on a podcast. And I just said, you know, what kind of topics do you talk about? That whole type of shit, right? And I go, well, you know, you can talk about the fact that you post shit with fucking rabbit ears all goddamn day long. And I was like, no dude on this, in this earth wants to see that out of somebody. And she was like, oh, I, I actually do do that all day long. And I played it off. I was like, oh, yeah, is that, you, don't, you don't say. I was like, I see, see it all day long. Right. And I don't know what it is. As a girl, can you, can, can you explain it to me? Is it because the filter smooths out their face mm-hmm. and then the dog ears is like, that, that kind of has to go along with it? It's just a distraction. Because if we showed our real face, we would kill ourselves. Oh, God damn it, man. Yeah, that so reverse, I, I, I That did, reverse I, camera. I did tell someone, and then they stopped doing it. Um, I, like I, I saw on their Instagram account, they stopped doing it, and then they went back to it. I think for girls, there's something in that filter that smooths out your shit where you're just like, mm-hmm. I'll, t- I'll be the asshole with dog ears for the rest of my yeah. life. And a tongue. Yeah, and then you don't have to do and the bunny shit. full makeup and everything. It puts lashes on you. It puts smooths out your face. It like it puts makeup on you. And then if you have to deal with the, you know, but there is there's Here's the, the thing, straight, ladies. Just You're not fooling one. us. You're not fooling us with this stupid shit. You look like a fucking child with a goddamn bunny mask on. Don't don't do it. Just stay away from that filter. You know, yeah. do it once. Gosh, I thought it would be done by now for sure. It's but, not. Yeah. You see it everywhere, right? I know. It just keeps going. I mean, so much that, more le- and less. And the flowers, so like the flower mm-hmm. thing, like the, you know, it's like you're not G, you're not Christ. You're not throwing on a crown of thorns and fooling me that, you know, it's just some, some fucking bird's nest that, that, you know, has got a smoothing application for your face. Like get, get the fuck off my lawn with that shit. Right. Um, so ladies out there. You're not fooling the dudes, and it's, it looks dumb. Mm-hmm. You know where it's fun to do with your children? Mm, yeah. If you have a child under the age of six. Not posting it. But yeah, save it for yourself. It with, yeah. Yeah. Self-save. No reason to post any of those with your child. And I'll use a beauty filter all day. Don't worry about that. But That's fine. But don't put don't There's put no animal. dog ears or anything yeah. like this. But. Uh, unless it's like a gator beak, you know? And it's like, Ooh. oh, oh yeah, that'd be fun. Get a four foot gator beak on your face, and then you, like, talk turn to me. And it like, yeah, yeah, that could be fun. <laughs> gator beak. Well, no girl wants to turn sideways. No, no dude wants to turn sideways and take a picture either. That's a fucking terrible shot. Yeah. You know, nobody wants a, a profile pic of that of yourself, no. like turn no. sideways. Ugh. Yeah. Nothing will make you feel worse about your life. Than that, there's maybe four people on the face of the planet who can take a, a good profile a pic good where profile, you're like, oh, yeah. all right, cool. And not have 19 chins and, you know, chipmunk cheeks. Looks like you're stashed away for a hard winter. Right. A bunch of nuts in your face. Like, oof. Yeah. So, ladies, stop the goddamn animal filters. All right. We're over it. We're over it. Uh, Japes. Yes. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Happy Memorial Day weekend. I might get a little more color. Yeah, same. I'll be working, but I'll Will you? try. I'll try. Sunday, I can not work. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And salute to the troops. Memorial Day weekend. Take a moment out of your weekend to remember what it's really all about. Um, and then you can move on to pounding endless fucking Miller lights. In their honor, though. Exactly. Yeah. You can move on to just chugging the entire weekend long. I saved some Zemos. They're not out this summer. Save some. I'm going to have some. I'm going to get wet. I'm going to get my beak wet with some. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I am Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Hope everybody's having a, a great Memorial Day. We love you. Good night. Good night. Good night.